One night, I, 18 male, was at the gym around 10 p.m. because I worked all day and my gym stays open all night. I was casually working out as I always have. Out of nowhere, this very short Hispanic guy comes out of nowhere and asks me what I'm doing later. Thinking this is very odd, I decided to ignore him and I acted like I couldn't hear him because of my headphones. He kept asking me the same question over and over, but eventually left. When I finished my workout, I went into the locker room to get my keys and check myself out in the mirror. As I entered the locker room, the guy was sitting on the bench just staring at me, like watching my every move. So I skipped looking at myself in the mirror and I grabbed my keys and go to the bathroom real quick. I can see how he starts to follow me as I head to the urinal, so I quickly resort to a stall. When I left the stall, he is still staring at me from the urinal. I ignore him and I start leaving the gym, but he still follows me outside. Once again, he asks me what I'm doing tonight and what my name is, but this time I couldn't pretend to not hear him, so I just said, sorry man, not interested. And I quickly got inside my car to drive away. A week later, I had work again this day, so I was at the gym around 10 p.m. again, and everything was normal. I was working out and I saw some friends, and then I saw the same guy from a week ago just staring at me while lying against the wall. I tried to ignore him, but every machine or workout I do, he starts to follow me. I stayed by some of my friends so he would hopefully not come near me. When those friends left, so did he, so I thought I was safe. I get my stuff together and head out around 11.30. At this point, my phone had died. I was a little bit worried, but then I started to freak out because I approached my car and there was a rose in my truck's handles, driver's side. I actually started to run and I went back in to get assistance from someone working because I didn't feel like dying that day. After removing it, I sped home as fast as I could. A few days after this, I had a normal workout and I didn't see him until I went to my truck. He was parked right next to me, standing in front of his car. While I got in, I could see him watching me the whole time. Now every time I go late at night, he's waiting for me and asking me weird questions. I talked to the workers about this and they said he's not from here and he's just trying to be nice. But I can't help but wonder why he won't get the hint when I keep telling him no. I wake up hours early now in the morning to go to the gym. But when I do go late, he's still there watching me every time. Another time there was a rose on my windshield and a phone wire wrapped around my handle. Then more recently, he added me on Snapchat and tried messaging me. I don't know how he knows my name or how he knew a car was mine in the first place. When I was 14, I worked at a McDonald's that was connected to a gas station. It was a truck stop though as well, so it was busy 90% of the time. The only downside to working at a truck stop fast food place was that the bathroom was on the complete other side of the building. I was a freshman in high school. At the time I was pretty small. Maybe not super small in height, but definitely in size. I was around 5 foot 6 and anywhere from 130 to 150 pounds. Definitely not super tiny, but small enough to where I'd probably have made an easy target. This wasn't a fear of mine, however, but maybe it should have been. I remember I was in gym class. It was maybe the middle of the school day and it was one of those days where we could just sit on the side and catch up on work for other classes if we didn't want to participate in the games. My friends and I did this almost all the time and almost never actually worked on anything important. We were laughing and joking around until I received power school notifications on my school iPad, excusing me from the remaining classes of the day. But I was really confused, considering my mom hadn't mentioned anything about picking me up early, and I was only seeing my dad every other weekend, and he wasn't the type to pick me up from school. I was grounded so I didn't have a phone with me, other than a cheap flip phone that my mom had gotten me from Walmart. I texted her about the notifications, but before I got a response back from her, my gym teacher told me I needed to grab my things and go to the office, because my mom would be picking me up. This just confused me even more, and I shot my mom another text, asking if she was picking me up from school. She freaked out and told me not to leave the building. At this point, I was sitting in the office by the window, waiting for apparently nobody to come pick me up, until the situation was figured out. My mom ended up calling the school and letting them know I wasn't allowed to leave with anyone that day. Apparently, whoever called claimed to be my mom and said they were coming to pick me up. 
As far as I know, nobody ever showed to pick me up. And I didn't hear anything else about it. My mom wasn't comfortable with me working at a truck stop after this, and we got my location switched to a McDonald's that was closer in town and wasn't connected to a gas station. What we think might have happened is someone saw my name tag and possibly called all the schools in the area until they found me, but I still have no idea how they would have known my last name. I'm a 25 year old woman, and I have a husky that I walk around my quiet neighborhood and brush outside for obvious reasons. Yesterday around 3pm, I'm standing in my front driveway, brushing my dog when I turn around to see a complete stranger. A grown man standing behind me. He begins by asking me if he can say hi to my dog because he's seen me around a lot and already I'm hesitant but I allow it and at this time I notice he's on FaceTime with his phone pointing at me though which was really weird. Then he tells me he just moved here from South Africa and bought the house at the end of the road. It's been abandoned for over a year now and was never posted for sale. He starts asking me if I'm 16 because he likes 16 year olds. Following up with, are you alone right now? Is this your house? And is this your car? Do you live alone? Are you around often? I politely say I'm not willing to answer those questions, and I told him to leave me alone. He walks into the woods across the street, then he came back like 15 minutes later attempting to invite himself into my house, and he kept asking me more questions this time along the lines of, do you lock your doors? Are you alone at nighttime? and he was getting upset with me for saying I didn't want him on my property and that I would be calling our cop neighbor to come outside if he didn't leave me alone. He stood in the street watching me walk into the house and lock up before walking away back to the abandoned house. Now I'm just left thinking if I'm overreacting or if being totally creeped out here is the correct response, because I believe it is. So me, my husband, and my daughter, who is seven, and my niece that's eight, all went camping this weekend. We've camped at this place four times and never had any issues. Last night we were setting up and about to start making dinner. This was about 8 p.m. When my daughter looks at me, then looks behind me, then looks back at me. I said, what? And she said, look behind you. There was a little kid, and he couldn't have been more than six years old, just standing there watching my daughter and niece play with a soccer ball. I figured he was camping too and just interested in what they were doing. My daughter invited him to play and he runs back in the woods like he got scared. We didn't see him for about 15 minutes, so I figured he went back to his campsite. Then he comes back, and at this point it's dark outside, so we asked where his parents were. He said he didn't have parents. So I'm like, what? Then my husband asked if he was camping here. And that's when the kids started screaming at my husband. My parents are dead and I'm homeless. I sleep in the woods. I said, okay, well that's not safe at all, bud. I'm gonna call someone to help you. And that's when he said, please call them. I don't have a family. So I start to call the non-emergency line and I give him some food and a Gatorade and told him to hang out until help got here. The cops got there about 10 minutes later and they start trying to talk to him. He takes off running into the woods and yells that his brother will be back for us and the cops chase after him. No idea what happened after that but I did not sleep a wink last night. It was the creepiest thing I've ever dealt with in my life and there's no houses within 10 miles of here. We're all worried about him but so creeped out about some of the things he said. About an hour ago, my manager and I were working closing shift at a store in my small town off the main road and across the only town's apartments. I was waiting at the register as usual and watching people come in around 10 minutes before close, keeping a close eye to who came in so that I could make sure they all left at the end of the night. There was a guy that came in after a girl that I randomly hyper fixated on. He walked down the main aisle towards the bathrooms and went out of sight. I don't know why, but I just had this feeling to make sure he left. Customer after customer came and went. The ones I saw come in. But five minutes to closing time, I took note of how the one guy hadn't left yet. My manager went to the bathroom and I stayed by the register until she came out and went to the office. I walked around the first few aisles in the front towards the door and I didn't see him. 
My manager came out and wanted to buy some things right before we were supposed to close. And I told her about the guy that I saw come in, but didn't see him leave. I felt really uncomfortable and disturbed and thought it was just because I'd been listening to this one insanely creepy podcast the past few weeks. But after this, she checked the whole store and then I went around and checked with her for a double take. We saw that he left a basket and it had a note in it. I could barely read it though. We went into the office after I grabbed my stuff and we checked the cameras several times. We saw him walk in on the cameras and we saw him walking around the store, but at one point he disappeared. Like he went to a blind spot where the cameras couldn't see him. We watched the cameras over and over, slowly skimming through to make sure we hadn't missed anything. Forwards and backwards, every single camera, outside and inside, right by the exit and the incoming door. He never left though. We decided to leave after about an hour and we called our general manager. We never saw him leave and the cameras never recorded him leaving. I've been terrified since it just happened. Very weird. I can't really make sense of this situation even now. This happened this past Saturday and I'm only just now feeling comfortable enough to talk about it. I spent the night out with my older sister and a couple of her friends. All we really did was go out to eat and then we took a walk in the city. Nothing crazy. Some of the people we were with had to leave for one reason or another, so I decided to call it a night. I had texted one of my guy friends and asked if he wanted to come over and watch a movie with me, to which he said yes. So me and my friends went our separate ways and I met up with my friend outside of my apartment. To add a little bit of context, my apartment is one single building with a backyard space that shared with two other similar style apartments. That may be important in a little bit. When I pulled up, there was a car that was parked across the street. I didn't think much of it. I assumed it was there for one of the neighbors. I went and changed while my friend scrolled Netflix for a movie to watch. As I'm leaving the bedroom, I hear a knock at the door. I'll admit this next part was incredibly stupid on my part. My area doesn't have many issues, so I got complacent. You can roast me in the comments if you must. I open the door to see a guy standing there. I'm a measly five foot six, and he was at least a head taller than me. He didn't look anything out of ordinary though. Mid to late twenties, brown hair, fully groomed beard, and moderately dressed. He asked where my sister was. I told him that I didn't have a sister, which was a lie. He then asked for her by her name. I told him again that he was mistaken. Not only did he address by her name and ask for her again, but he mentioned that he followed her from the place we had just left and he just wanted to see her. Absolutely not. Nothing about that sat right with me. So I started to close the door, but he walked up and physically prevented me from doing so. I planted my hands into his chest and pushed him back, which achieved nothing at all. He then started calling her name very loudly and continued trying to make his way past me. I yelled at him to leave and I stood my ground the best I could. He ended up shoving me aside, but before he could get past me, my friend pushed him against the wall and hit him in the face. After that, he bolted out of the door and into the parked car across the street. My friend pulled the door closed and locked it, then helped me and moved me into the bedroom while he went to make sure the guy left. I called the police and filed a report. Also, this is the stupidity I mentioned earlier. I have a ring doorbell camera and I should have just engaged with him from the inside and not opened the door. But carelessness got the better of me in that instant and I'm still kicking myself over it. This could have ended a lot worse. I showed my sister his picture and she has no recollection of who he is, though she said he looked somewhat familiar. The only theory that I have as to why he followed me is the fact that I accidentally left that night while wearing my sister's jacket. Still very creepy no matter which way you look at it. 